So that was me dealing with Amtrak. After calling them once, uh, they offered me a fucking coupon for a hundred bucks. Non-transferable, non-redeemable. I guess I was still kind of asleep when I called. By the way, I'm looking at the screen and not the camera for some reason. I'm just not used to filling them, filling myself. Anyway, uh, there's some issues. Th this was essentially my video game fan fest. I got to the train station at 7:30 in the morning, and I found out that my train had been delayed for eight hours. At least they said it was eight hours. It felt more like ten because the train didn't even arrive until four o'clock in the afternoon. Long after most of the people had already arrived at, at the hotel for, for VGFF. So I went home went back to work in packing and repacking a couple things, rearranging some stuff for a hard drive that I wound up forgetting anyway, which would be this thing. It's a 500 gig Seagate external hard drive, which had a bunch of stuff that I was going to bring for people to essentially copy over so they can watch later, because I figure everybody's, everybody would be too busy playing video games or, or board games anyway. So yeah, it had the it had the Lord Cat archives. It had uh, well, that was the, that was the whole point. It was just to get the Lord Cat archives on there, which is about 166 gigabytes, by the way. I probably should download some more of his stuff. There's, I don't think it's too late. I mean, he's still up on Twitch. He's going to be on Twitch for a long time, so I could still do it. I just need to get some more hard drive space. Yeah. <coughs> So the reason why I got delayed was because of a derailment in Chicago, which pushed my train back and back and back. In fact, when I got to the train station at 7.30 in the morning, it had just left Indianapolis. So I finally got there at 4, 4 o'clock onto the train, and away I went, and went, and went, and went, until 2.15 in the morning when everybody had went to bed. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Got delayed again at Staunton. Staunton? Staunton? Uh, I thought it was I thought it was Staunton. It might have been Staunton. But I got delayed there for about 45 minutes because a freight train got in the way and we had to wait for it to move. So yeah, that there was another fucking delay. It could have, we I could have got there, got to Virginia at around 1:30 or close to 1:45. I figure someone would have been awake at that point. But what can you do? So I finally got to the station. I got I was more or less stranded since nobody was awake and. I only had a couple of phone numbers anyway. I only had Twisted Puppet, uh, Who Girl, and Lord Cat. Technically, I had Yeri's phone number as well, but for some reason, my Razor AT&T service sucks. Doesn't make international calls, as I found out. I thought it was just a problem with me dialing the number incorrectly, but no, it, it does not do international calling. So after about two hours of worrying myself sick, I I finally managed to hail a taxi. And this this is this was more of a more of a luck kind of thing. A woman was coming to the Amtrak station just to get inside and uh, and access an ATM. I asked her if I could if she could share her cab with me so I could go to the, go to the Holiday Inn Express from there. Um. She asked the driver. Uh, the driver t uh, motioned to me and said that he can't, that he personally couldn't drive. He, he couldn't uh, he couldn't take me in. But he did send for another cab, the White Cap Cab Company. 
I do recommend these guys. They 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 charge decent rates. Once I got in and eventually found out where the hell the hotel was, because as it turned out, as it turns out in my itinerary, I had written down the wrong address, the wrong hotel. See, I, I wrote this, I wrote down the address and the where part of it back when Lorcat was still booked to get to be doing this at the Hampton Inn. So. Yeah, that, that, that was my own fault. Luckily, I had the proper address saved at home on uh, Google Ma on Google Maps? No, Google Earth. So, after spending about 20 minutes trying to explain to the folks how to get to Google, Google Earth and my bookmarks, I uh, finally got the address down, and I was finally on my way. Uh, again, this is why I lo I prefer this cab company in Virginia, in Alexandria, Virginia, because the guy did not start the didn't start the meter until after he was in motion, and we weren't in motion. We were still at the Amtrak station for the 20 minutes it took to get the address written down. So that was good. That was really good. I liked that. Uh, once I finally got to the to the hotel at 4:30 in the morning. I was informed that my reserved room for Who Girl and Twisted Puppet as well, they were rooming with me. I was I was trying to keep that qu uh, a secret because I didn't want I didn't want to be that kind of guy who would brag. Yeah, I'm rooming with two ladies. <laughs> I didn't want to be that guy, so I kept that part secret. But it turned out that room was canceled by the hotel staff because I showed up after midnight. I told them. I was going to be late because the Am because the Amtrak train was delayed severely. And we're going to get back to this Amtrak thing later. So they reinstated the hotel room but be but because my room was already given to someone else, they gave me a temporary room which I had to get the hell out of before noon the following morning. I figured, fuck it, I'll just drop all my stuff off in the in the, the conference room anyway. Because, well, it's not like I was going to be sleeping in there anyway. So I just dropped my stuff off in the meeting room, conference room, whatever. And I sat in there and I shot a preliminary vlog of me just uh, d documenting my experience on board the Amtrak train and the fact that I was just so happy to make it here but I was just so tired and depressed and I was like uh, is this even worth it in a way yeah it was worth it I did get to meet everybody but I'm getting ahead of myself again so I went to my hotel room my temporary room I took a shower for some reason that woke me up I had not slept since 4.30 in the morning. I, I woke up rather early. My alarm didn't wake me up. I just woke up on my own. And then, then I went packed and went to the train station. Uh, once I had my shower, suddenly I was like I was, I was injected with uh, industrial strength caffeine or something. Because suddenly I was awake again for several more hours. So I went down to the lobby and uh, just sat around waited for breakfast. Eventually breakfast came and and uh, I was greeted by someone who I who I was like so how was your night? <laughs> I didn't know who it was and then I found out it was Ishtimo from the chat which was awesome, that was my, my first contact, yay! So we started having breakfast and uh, eventually others started showing up and eventually I got to meet Jason in person which was awesome. Uh, we chatted for a while. I told him what I'm telling you right now, and you know, we just did some random chatting. I showed off some of my some of my uh, DS homebrew stuff. Like uh, I got DOS running on the the DSi, which is awesome. It's slower than fuck. It takes forever to load a to do a dir slash w command. At about 10, 15 seconds, mostly because of the limited memory of the the DS. But that's the DS. You have to you have to go with what you got. 
So anyway, we finally got back into the room and I started unpacking, trying to figure out where I'm going to put everything and not all of my stuff was used. I just didn't have any pla I didn't have any place to set up. There was uh, th there wasn't a whole lot of tables. There was a lot of there was a couple of round tables and a couple of uh, rectangular tables set up for uh, for PCs and laptops and some tables alongside the walls for the retro gaming. But there wasn't any anywhere for me to set up. And I don't know if there was any more tables in the back or if uh, I, I just don't know. I, I didn't have any place to set up at all. It wasn't until about maybe 6 o'clock at night that I finally got my Xbox up and running. Turned out I forgot a couple of stuff too. I, I brought my Famicom with disc. And I forgot to bring the di the, the Famicom discs. Yeah, I, ha I have five games by the way. I've got Metroid, Pro Wrestling, Mario 2, Zelda, and Zelda 2. I figured that would have been cool if if I could have got the Famicom up and running because it's a modified one with an AV output. You can just plug it into a into a TV and there you go. Don't have to worry about uh, NTSC Japan standards. But but on the whole, it was awesome meeting everybody. Uh, it was awesome doing a couple of games. We had a we had a couple of races. Uh, I had, well, at least one race. I, me and someone I don't even know who he was. I don't know who most of the people were in the room except for the, those who introduced themselves to me. Uh, Master Wang, Ishtamo. I already knew Puppet and Who Girl and Jason. Uh, Ty Mast. It was awesome to meet him. Uh, Kazi. Uh, we spoke a couple of times, but he was mostly trying to. He was mostly trying to keep things in order. That and trying to enjoy him his himself and which we were all we were all enjoying ourselves pretty good. Uh it was cool meeting Patrick for the first time because uh, fun fact I was one of uh, one of the early adopters of his podcast uh, Spine Breakers which uh I, it didn't really suit me all that well, but I hung around anyway, just to just just to listen about about some book talk. I don't really read much books myself. The only books I've got are comic strip collections, the the three Wrestle Crap books, and uh, uh, oh, the Bloom County collection. But that's also a comic strip collection, so there you go. Uh I also got the oatmeal book, How to Tell If Your Cat's Plotting to Kill You, but that that's that's irrelevant. It's I guess it could also count as a as a comic strip because it is some of a some of a web comic. But we, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. I got my Xbox hooked up. We did a couple of games. Uh, Eastmo and Twisted Puppet played uh, t Ninja Turtles with me, and and uh, I and. Had a race with Ishtimo to see who could beat Turtles 3 faster because I had the Famicom uh, cart version and he was playing the American version. So we each grabbed a partner and started making out. No, we start we, we tried to, to beat it as fast as possible. That also sounded dirty. But yeah, after it was all over, we uh, started packing up again. And uh, we all went to bed and started setting up to, to go home again. <sighs> I have a problem with letting go of my previous job. And here's why I say this. We were all just so, just so stubborn in the whole idea of just leaving, thing, leaving the tables as they were, leaving the floor as they were. Because... Jason pointed out that the hotel does have a cleaning staff. We didn't really have to put everything back the way they were. The tables and the chairs. I don't know what everybody else's excuse, what their reasons were, but my reason is because I used to be a busser at a, at a four-star casino with a two-star restaurant. <laughs> they mostly dealt in parties and, and banquets and functions. I, 
and uh, I'm, I'm just so used to setting up tables, uh, setting tables with linens, and uh, assigning chairs, that kind of thing, and then eventually putting the chairs back, putting the tables back, and breaking things down. It's just something I'm used to doing. So, hell, I even asked, I even told Chase and I was about to ask him for a tip. <laughs> I do have a lot of restaurant stories, and I'll, I'll eventually start telling them on the stream. Eventually, once I, uh, once I get over the whole idea that I'm not a busser anymore. Eventually. But yeah, this was an awesome uh, fan fest. It's just the lead up and the aftermath that kind of soured me on the whole thing. But that's no one's fault. No one's fault except for the hotel themselves and Amtrak. Which I will get back to in a short bit. The hotel could not shuttle me to the Amtrak station, which was just down the road. They couldn't do that, so they shuttled me to the metro station. More specifically, the end of the yellow line. This is important, because it turned out that there is a long ride on the yellow line to get to Gallery Place. Then I had to jump the red line to Glenmont, and then, take, then two stops later stop at Union Station, and jump on the Amtrak station there. At least that was the directions that this nice young lady uh, to told me. This very nice young lady. I told her that I was trying to get to the Amtrak station. It turned out she didn't know that, that there was an Amtrak station two stops away on the yellow line. And I was just so exhausted from pulling my bags. 80 pounds worth of, of video games that I, I didn't bother to look and see that yeah I was I did have an opportunity to stop at the Alexandria Amtrak station so I wound up riding this thing all the way to DC <sighs> granted I love Obama and what he's doing but I don't need to be in the vicinity of where he's at <laughs> especially not when I'm trying to catch a fucking train So after a, a lot of running around, carrying the bags, essentially fucking up, up my fingers, I don't know if you can see this or not, let me go ahead and turn on the light. If you look closely on my middle finger right here, you see a gigantic uh, burn spot. That's from me pulling my, my, my uh, luggage box, it feels like a box, filling my luggage pulling my luggage bag all over Union Station trying to get to the Amtrak station within essentially holding my balls and praying to God cuz I didn't even know if this was going to work cuz it was it was set to leave the Alexandria station not the DC station so it's more it was more or less a DC circle jerk at that point but luckily uh Luckily, the lady at the Amtrak counter was understanding. She she uh, made a, a slight adjustment, no charge for my uh, for my ticket. So I was able to board the Amtrak station there. And as I was getting on the train, the guy that that was helping my bag up, he said, "In the future, you need to check this bag." Um, no, I can't because Amtrak has a policy regarding no electronics. No electronics, no valuables, although musical instruments that you that people wound up playing on the train annoying fucking people, that's okay. You can you can blat a trumpet or a or a recorder or a flute all you want. But electronics that that are not plugged in, not doing anything, that's bad. That is that that, that makes you worse than Hitler. No. Can't do that. Fuck you, Amtrak. So the ride home started. And... Yeah. I rode all the way up, up to about 8.30. 
from about 11 20, from 11:30 uh well, my train was supposed to was supposed to leave at 11:24 but I wound up leaving DC to go to, to go all the way to, to Charleston West Virginia I started at about 11:06 all the way up to 11:30 at night or 8:30 at night 11 I'm still kind of tired. It's been a day now, and I'm still, I'm I'm still kind of beat to where I can't speak straight. The whole time I was at the, uh, the whole time I was at the at the the hotel, and the whole the whole time I was riding home, I kept thinking, okay, I need to I need to do something about this whole Amtrak problem. I need to I need to get my money back somehow because this is ridiculous. At least for the first trip. The second trip back was fine. At least that was that was on time. The only problem I have to had to worry about were people uh, playing the musical instruments and uh, parents who who lost control of their kids, obviously, because they kept screaming and crying and yelling and just going. You don't want to hear that for about six solid hours. And evidently the parent didn't want to either, but it didn't seem like parents were able to control their kids. Other than the Amish couple that was seeing next to me for a short while and running up and down the up up and down the aisles like like they were like they were enforcers or something. They were just walking sternly. <clears throat> just like they had a purpose. I'm gonna walk up and down these aisles in my gingham skirt and go, <clears throat> Fuck. Is this a Hamtrak or a little house in the prairie? <laughs> the fuck? But yeah, that was the trip back. And eventually I got home about about 9 o'clock. Turned on the computer, laid back, and it happened to be the same time uh, Jason was waking up from his nap. And, uh, yeah, that was my trip. I will mention this last. Uh, there, there's two things that happened uh, that uh, that yeah, just two things that happened. One, uh, the Amtrak situation. I did eventually call Amtrak, as you saw in the prelude in this video. I did get my fifty fifty dollars back for the for the for the delayed trip it's going to take about four to six weeks for it to be tr to be uh, credited to my card which is good so at least at, at least if you scream at them hard enough they will they will abide but you you, you gotta stick with it because they take forever for you to get through to customer relations they don't want you to be mad so then, so then they can just walk all over you. Just keep at it, and you will get your money back if you were screwed. Now, there is one last thing I wanted to talk about before I end this: uh, selling the selling the community. I had a moment where I recalled classic 1980s WWF booking. For example, Ted DiBiase, he was given $500 bills, he was given $100 bills, he was given a huge wad of cash every time that he arrived at the arena to be to to either stuff in the mouth of his rest of his uh, defeated opponents or to go out and sell the character, get the character over. Ted DiBiase's instructions were simple: whenever you feel the time is right get the character over as the million dollar man somehow Vince knew that he was not the kind of person who would who would who would uh, abuse the privilege of having tons and tons and tons of money so he would walk into a bar or a restaurant look around see if there's about 50 to 100 people throw the money on the counter and say I'm picking up the tab for everybody and then walk out because you know people are going to talk I had that moment on the train ride back from D.C. to West Virginia. I met this nice young lady. 
she kind of looked like Rachel Maddow, but, but with glasses. She was really nice. Uh, she was from New York. We talked a little bit. The topic of Staten Island came up. I told her all about the about Hurricane Irene. If you're watching, by the way, Ariel, um, I apologize. I said Sandy. I meant to say Hurricane Irene. That video that I told her about the fact that 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 Wikipedia video of the live stream of the the of the of the the flood outside someone's house. I told her that was that was this guy that I went to his convention and met him in person. She was blown away by the fact that that was his video. So I started talking to her about the Lord Cab Mafia and about the chat room and about the community as a whole. She wasn't really all that much into video games, but she seemed interested. She she seemed interested in the podcast and the and the community as a whole. So I gave her my third bubble fish. I had I had two bubble fishes already. I think that was Mumble. <laughs> I had two bubble fishes, one from uh, one uh, for me, a second one which I took, which was pink, which I which I gave to Morgan, my my niece, and I had a second white one. I gave uh, Ariel the third one. Yeah, just just as, just to, to show her that yes, we 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 we're giving people. We we like we like people. Come hang out with us, that kind of thing. So yes, uh, that's where the third bubble fish went. <laughs> yeah. Yep, this is my white bubble fish. Yeah, bubble fish. <laughs> this is my second plushie from Simu. Uh, the second, the first one you may have seen on occasion in the Google Plus uh, albums. Uh, the photo albums. I think I might have showed it on the stream once or twice, maybe, of a uh, Daria plushie that she made for me. Simu is very talented. You should go to her Deviant Art. You should buy plushies from her. She 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 does good work. She really puts her heart and soul into it. You should you should do that. <laughs> so yeah, that that was my video game fan fest. The bads kind of outweigh the goods, but as I understand, there is going to be a video game fan fest 2014. I will go. I won't be taking Amtrak, but I am going to somehow get there, and I'm going to try to plan this out more efficiently because uh, a lot of my stuff wasn't used. I, mean, I was trying to. I was wanting to provide stuff for the for the room. I brought a bunch of Ethernet cables. I brought two power strips, with all of which were not used. In fact, the only Ethernet cable that was used was my long ass 50, 50 foot Cat six cord, which wound up going into the wall. Uh, Yeri offered his laptop as a uh, as a piggyback service with the with the local Wi-Fi, which by the way was upgraded prior to us getting there. That was the only uh, piece of equipment that was used. My Xbox One, uh, which I brought ca uh, cables and three controllers. All the games were already on board since, since it's a modified Xbox with a 300 gig hard drive. It wasn't used. Uh, there was nowhere to plug it in. Uh, my Famicom with disc. The Famicom itself could have been used, but it wasn't. There was, ju there was just not enough room at the retro tables. I mean, there was barely enough room for the Sega Genesis, the Atari, and the uh, FC Twin. I don't know who brought those, but uh, whoever you are, you are awesome for bringing them. I think Eastmo brought the Atari. I don't know about the other stuff. Uh, hmm. Brought popcorn. Nobody, nobody wanted to have any popcorn, I guess. I don't know. Also, nobody wanted to try the hot sauce. I guess people were scared about the fact that it's four million uh, Scovilles. But yeah, this is a Kajan's uh, Z Nothing Beyond. This is my uber, super duper hot sauce that will burn you for life. <laughs> it won't kill you, but you'll wish it did. You can get those at kajans.com for about ten bucks a bottle. 
And if you're really daring, I'd say check it out. I do use this from time to time, as you've noticed, about eh, a quarter of the bottle has been used, I suppose. I do dab it on my chicken and my, uh, my hot dogs. About two dabs, one on each side of the hot dog, and about three dabs on the chicken. I'm proud of it. I, lo I love the hot sauce. So yeah, I, I enjoyed Video Game Fan Fest. Uh, I would recommend you sign on and, and check it out next year when we do it again. Don't know the exact date or where it's going to be, but we're shooting for a bigger, bigger place because there was just not enough room. We want to do this and we want to do it right. And we're going to attempt to make it right, one way or another. So keep, keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled on the Lord Cat forums. We'll be hearing more throughout the year. I highly recommend it. But for now, I got work to do. Clicky, clicky.